I should say that I'm an engineer and not a teacher, so hopefully you can still hear me in the back. Not something that I've got much practice in. Um, so we had some really amazing talks uh, this morning and this afternoon all about how to go about um, teaching people computer science. Um, and uh, I thought I'd take this opportunity since, you know, uh, Google are an excellent search engine company. Um, we're not really uh, expert educators, so rather than tell you how to teach computing, I mean, you already know that, um, I thought I'd speak a little about why we think we should be teaching computing. Um, and um, one of my roles as uh, director of Google's presence of engineering in the UK is to ensure that we have lots of engineers working for Google in the UK. Um, we have around 450 engineers working in the UK. Um, that's increased by a factor of two over the last year and a half. Um, it's not going to slow down anytime soon, I don't think. Um, so while the rest of the UK economy is perhaps in a little trouble, um, at least we're certainly recruiting people. And it's not just Google. I mean, the, um, the next gen report that I'm sure many of you have read um, highlighted how many of the up-and-coming UK industries, um, visual effects, gaming, um, all require um, computer science um, graduates uh, to work within them. Um, so there's a huge need um, in the economy at the moment, and you'd think that given our rich history of computing um, in the UK, we have people like Turing who effectively invented all of computing, um, we would have this really, really strong pipeline of graduates coming through to work at companies such as, well, such as Google, but also all the other companies in the UK. Um, that just doesn't happen. Since 2002, the number of people studying computer science in the UK has fallen by 23%. Now, let's just think about what's happened um, in the industry, and more importantly, socially, since 2002. I mean, 2002 was um, two years before Twitter existed. No, two years before Facebook existed, four years before Twitter existed. And you can argue about whether or not it's a good thing for children to be uh, active in these spaces and the pastoral care issues of children defriending each other on Facebook. But um, you have to realize that it has transformed the relevance of technology for these people. Um, many children are, are constantly using um, social networks to exchange their day-to-day -day lives. Um, um, in addition, computing has got much, much more accessible. So um, the current UK smartphone penetration for teenagers is 47%. So 47% of teenagers in the UK have a device that's considerably more powerful than I ever used, you know, five or ten years ago. Um, so there definitely seems um, something that's really um, disjoint about these two um, statistics. I mean, the computing has shifted from a world of being centered in, in hard sciences and, and boring work, spreadsheets, graphing, that kind of thing, to literally being about your day-to-day -day life. And we're just not seeing that carried across to the individual kids. And that's something that we need to fix. Um, and we know that exposure to computing at the school level um, helps fix this. Intel did um, a fair amount of research that proves it. Um, we did some informal research inside Google. We polled um, our engineers and asked them, of all our engineers, who were exposed to computing at school. 98% of our engineers were exposed to computing at school. So there's a really, really strong correlation between being exposed to computing at school um, and actually first taking that forward as a career. Um, that's the first reason that I think we're, we should be teaching computing in schools. Mainly, uh, mainly it's selfish. I need to hire lots of people. This is a good way of getting it. Um, I, I think the second reason is much, much, much more important, and that is that um, computing and technology in general is one of the very few fields where a single person or a small group of people um, with an idea and a passion and very little resources can go on and build something that can change the world economically, politically, socially. Um, I mean, one example of this would be the first Google um, search engine. This is the first Google search engine. 
Um, this is the cluster at um, Stanford. Uh, you'll see it's what we describe as a highly available system. Um, all the hardware used to make this was highly available. Larry and Sergey stole it from other people's offices when they weren't running and cabled it together. So literally, they, the only resources they had were a, a small amounts of stolen hardware and, um, and their passion to create something that will go on and change the world. Um, now, I'm not going to suggest that, that all our high school uh, children will go and create um, um, uh, search engines and the like, but it is worth looking at some of the things that people are doing um, at the moment. So um, one of the fun things that I, I've got involved with the last couple of weeks is I was um, asked to help uh, select the finalists for the Google Science Fair. So the Google Science Fair is a international um, uh, competition that we run where we ask children at school to um, um, dream up a science project and the winners get to go and, and showcase their um, uh, projects to the world um, over in California. Um, one of those people um, was a girl, uh, Brittany Wagner. Um, she's a, a high school student um, in Ohio, if I remember correctly. Um, she unfortunately um, had um, incidents of cancer in her family, and that um, affected her quite deeply. And um, she learned through her biology classes that um, there are lots of various different signals that can predict cancer. It's just hard to tell. Um, and she was also exposed to a, um, um, a little bit of computer science. And so for her science fair um, project, which we selected the finalists, no guarantee it will win necessarily, but um, she built a small neural network system um, that will take the results of a non-invasive biopsy of um, uh, breast cancer and predict with 99.1% accuracy whether or not that person will develop breast cancer. And that, that's a truly world-changing technology, and that was just developed by a single high school student who happened to know a bit of biology and know a bit of computer science. Um, it happened, actually, that she accidentally stumbled. Obviously, um, when diagnosing cancer, um, the, the cost of a false negative is really high, and she happened to stumble across an innovative way of handling that in neural networks. So there's actually some real computer science going on there. Um, uh, a little bit closer to home. Um, one of my 20% um, projects, if, if you uh, uh, know Google, allow engineers to spend 20% of their time doing um, work that's not their primary job in order to kind of foster creativity and maybe discover some exciting new things along the way. Um, I'm involved in a hackathon series um, called Interactivism. Now, I'm, I'm sure many of you are aware of hackathons, but the basic gist is you uh, get a group of people who are excited and passionate about a particular subject, and you lock them in a room with free food and free drink, generally, for a couple of days and hope something interesting emerges from it. Um, it was, uh, generally comes from the open source community. A lot of open source projects, because they are distributed across the world, um, they will turn to things like hackathons to occasionally bring their people together and work on an open source project or software. Um, a number of people, uh, including Google, are trying to experiment with whether or not this model can be used to solve social problems as well as technical problems. Um, so what we've been doing is, is picking a particular social problem every six or so months. Um, the last thing we looked at a couple of months ago was um, young people who weren't in education or training. And so what we did is we got a bunch of university computing students, a bunch of high school computing students, um, some product designers, um, some project managers, and, uh, and some young people, both young people who were in education and young people who weren't in education. We locked them in um, a building we hired in London for a couple of days and we, to see what came out of it. Um, one of the things that came out of it was um, a project called uh, Future Builder. And um, what it does is, is driven by um, the young people themselves. The young people themselves said they were lost in terms of um, career. They felt that they had been sold a vision where they can be, go on to do anything in life, but didn't know how to do it because there were just so many choices, so many options. Um, they, they didn't know how to progress. They would want to be a software engineer, for example, or a, a, a doctor, um, didn't know what to do next. Um, so the Future Builder team wrote a little bit of software where the um, user 
can enter in what they're interested in. Maybe they've done um, some qualifications in the past, maybe not even GCSE stage, maybe you know, things way far before then, and um, also where they would like to go. And through a set of rules and data mining that they generated, it will plot them a path and say, ah, oh, well, maybe you want to go and do this and this and this year, and then after that, go on and study this at university, and really kind of help guide their career. And this is a case where young people themselves are coming up with a technical solution to help other young people to a, a social problem. I mean, um, with many of these hackathon projects, it, it's unclear whether or not this will go on and be successful after the day. You know, there's probably you know, maybe a 10% chance that it will work. Um, but we had over a, a 150, 200 people at this event. And they were all teams, and they were all working on this. And sometime, somebody is going to get lucky and come up with an idea that really is going to go on and change the world. Um, and that, to me, is the most exciting part. Because if you think back, um, just that little bit of exposure to computing gives people what they know to be able to go on and make those decisions. Maybe they don't end up being a software engineer. Um, Brittany, who, who I featured in the first project, um, she wants to go on to become a pediatric oncologist and look at the medical side of cancer. But because she learned a bit about computing, it helped inform her decision. Um, so I think what most frightens me is the opportunity cost of not giving people this computing education. Just think about the kind of things that we are just removing from society, the potential change, if people aren't aware of this. Um, so hopefully I've, I've convinced you that it's, I mean, you probably, I'm preaching to the conversion. You know it's important, but that's why I think it's important. Um, I'll try to, to tell you a little about how I think Google can help. Um, before we do that, it, it's worth stepping back and looking at Google's technical philosophy. How do we approach technical problems? Um, and um, what we typically do is we focus on our core strengths, which is building software. And we build um, reliable, scalable, replicatable systems. And we need to do that because we get a massive amount of search traffic. Um, and a lot of people use it. So we need um, systems that can readily scale to, to, to handle um, the large amount of volume that we have. Um, and that scalability um, has useful knock-on effects. Um, for example, um, this is one of our data centers that, uh, over in California. And you'll notice those are, uh, are real fire engines outside. So it, a lot of what we do is buy cheap, um, off-the-shelf um, hardware and focus on our core strengths, which is building clever software that knows how to manage this cheap hardware. The problem with chief hardware is it fails all the time. You could go out and buy a really, really expensive supercomputer and it wouldn't fail. That would make your software easier. Um, it doesn't matter if your data center burns down. So if your data center has a chance of burning down, you might as well just go down the route of, of um, buying the cheap hardware and using clever software to focus on it. And that, that's generally our strategy. So we look for ways to scale. Um, and we look for ways to focus on our strength. Um, and that's how we're trying to approach our involvement with education. I, I mentioned that we are not um, teachers. I'm not a teacher. I'm an engineer. I build things. I don't know how to teach to children. Um, so it doesn't make sense for us to try and prescribe or do anything to try and tell you how to teach children. You're the experts there. Um, it also doesn't necessarily make sense for us to get directly involved one-to-one -one with schools. Although I, I have um, gone in and done many visits with um, schools in London, it can't be the focus of our activity. I mean, we're a quite a large company, but not large compared to the number of school children in the UK um, and uh, number of schools that need helping. So despite what some government ministers have uh, said, uh, it doesn't make any sense us going into schools and trying to directly um, support things. So we have to say, how do we think we can best support the education drive, given our limited resources? And I think probably the best thing we can do is, is the inspiration, is like trying to encourage people and trying to, to make them see why they should do it. And, and hence, I featured Brittany's stories from Google Science Fair. So Google Science Fair is um, one of the ways we try to inspire people to go on uh, and really show the power of computing. Um, same thing for the hackathon series that we run. That's a, a great way we try to show um, how to um, uh, the social effects and, and of um, what children can do when they kind of bring together. Um, one interesting digression, actually, is that um, 
the, when we look at the attendees um, of our Interactivism Hackathon series who are interested in the technical side and the software side, it's 50-50 male and female. And it seems which is completely bizarre in the, the software industry. And it, it, it seems that um, changing the pitch from here is some interesting technical problem to here is a real world social problem that needs solving through technology makes things much more relevant and attracts more people. But um, so we run science fairs, we run hackathons, um, we engage with museums. We're opening a couple of big exhibitions at the, at the Science Museum in London, one on Turing um, next month and one on communications in the future. But the goal is to really show people how exciting our space is. Um, and that way, us as a relatively small group of people can touch a large number of students. Um, uh, we also try to contribute directly to, to some of your own projects. So we have a couple of um, grants. Uh, we have um, CS for HS, which is a grant um, that we can give out if you have a project um, that somehow will involve teaching computing in your area. Um, and RISE, which is a set of awards, um, uh, a broader remit of anything that will improve um, uh, science and STEM teaching. Um, so I was actually one of the talks before here. I was doing card tricks with the CS for Fun uh, people. Uh, that, that magazine, um, we've uh, um, been, uh, gladly we've been able to support that with uh, some small amount of finance over the last few years, and hopefully we'll be able to keep doing that. Um, so that's um, really how we hope to, rather than kind of get uh, um, directly involved ourselves, hopefully you as the experts will find great ways to improve the situation, and if you really have a way that can help um, kids, we might be able to, to come along and, and, and help fund things. Um, so, uh, I won't take any more of your time, only to say that if you do want to know um, any more about any of the ways that we uh, might be able to support your efforts, um, if you have projects you think that, that would need a bit of financial support that could touch things, um, it's all available on this very nice, prettily designed website, google.com slash edu. Um, but otherwise, um, you know... You're already doing great things. Um, hopefully, we'll be there to, to support you. And um, thanks for everything you've done so far. <laughs>